I can go? Okay. Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, just bear with me, it's my first time speaking in GeoFocus. So, uh, today's topic, I choose to talk about test automation framework, its design and implementation. So, I'm going to go through um, basically the most known design patterns and what to expect when choosing the right test automation framework for, uh, for your project or for your solution. I'll start with an intro. Uh, well, I'm Miriam Zaid. I'm a senior uh, QA engineer or automation engineer at uh, Deloitte. Well, you can scan uh, the QR code if you want to follow me for in, on Twitter for, uh, for more information. I share a lot about this automation and design patterns. So, uh, going through the agenda, um, I will do a, a bit of overview of different type of uh, test automation framework. I will go through the design and implementations and the best practices uh, with, with uh, the test automation framework, basically. And the conclusion. So basically, what is, what is a test automation framework? So I'm just going to level up a question. Uh, is any one of you doing testing here? Wow. <laughs> nice to meet you all. <laughs> I'm not meeting a lot of testers here, so uh, nice to meet you. Uh, who is here doing automation, basically, or performance? Let's see, three, four people. Oh, interesting. So I'm going to ask you later what are you are using for automation, of course. <laughs> So, um, I'll go through the presentation. So, what is the test automation framework actually? Um, sorry. Well, uh, I had to do this disclaimer because it's based on uh, personal experience. Um, personal experience at Deloitte, actually, and previous companies. So, what is the test automation framework? So, a test automation framework is basically um, a platform, um, uh, there is a combination of programs, uh, well, and tools, features, and compilers. It's actually an environment uh, that is provided where an automation test scripts uh, can be executed. Uh, the types of test automation frameworks we can, we can have are different. So here we have linear, linear framework, modular, uh, data-driven framework, keyword-driven framework, and hybrid frameworks. So I'm going to go through uh, each one of them, what is it, and how we can use it with an example uh, uh, at the last slide, of course. So I'm going to go with the linear framework. The linear framework actually is the simplest type of test automation frameworks we can have, uh, uh, where Actually, the test, the test cases are executed in a linear sequential uh, fashion, where test cases are executed uh, one after the other in the order in which they are written. Uh, the model of framework actually is a more structured approach uh, that, is, um, that is used uh, in most companies or in most projects. So this is where the tests are, are grouped together based on the functionality um, the, uh, the, um, on the functionality they are testing, uh, this, makes, this makes it easy to identify and update test cases that needs to be um, executed when changes are made to the applications. So the data-driven framework, this is very known, though data-driven framework is a type of test automation framework that uh, separates, uh, actually that separates the test data from the test cases, which, which is most common, of, uh, of course. Um, this allows for easy maintenance of this test data, and it makes it easy to the test application with different sets of data. So this type of framework is best uh, for it's this, this type of, uh, of framework uh, is best suited for large projects such as um, online online shopping uh, platform. Um, the keyword driven data, the keyword driven uh, the keyword driven framework. For, uh, sorry is a type of t test automation framework um, where that uses keyword to represent different, uh, different actions that need to be performed during testing. This makes it easy to create and maintain test cases as well to update test cases when changes are made to the application. The hybrid framework um, is a combination of two 
or more uh, types of this automation framework. So we can use two at once. Um, this type of framework can be used to take advantage of the strengths of different frameworks and can be tailored to meet uh, the specific needs of a project. Next up, um, I'll go through the design and architecture uh, of a test automation framework. So this here, um, uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna say that a well-designed test automation framework should be maintainable, scalable, and uh, easily ap adaptable to, uh, to the changes that we have in, in our project. So here, the bullet points we need to remember for the design and architecture of this automation framework are uh, test runner, test libraries, reporting tools, this data, data and, uh, and design patterns. <laughs> Sorry. So for the test runner, um, any one of you here are using specific test runners for their application? I'm speaking of the automation engineers here. No one? Okay. So the test runner is basically the component uh, that is responsible for executing uh, the test cases. Uh, it is also responsible also for loading uh, the test cases, executing them, and generated, generating the test results. The test libraries, um, um, I, can, I can give you an example. For example, there are a lot of test, test libraries we can use within our application or our frameworks. Um, for example, if you're working with uh, on JavaScript or Java, uh, the most known is GUnit. Um, for example, here <coughs> on the test libraries, uh, there are a collection of reusable functions and methods that can be used to perform um, a common task during during testing. So this can be. Um, this can include functions for logging in, navigating the, the, the application, and verifying application state. The reporting tools, um, well, actually there is a book here, uh, they are using uh, um, an interesting reporting tool, it's, it's called Gatlin. It's one of uh, the sponsors here in uh, GFocus. They have an interesting, uh, an interesting platform. So the reporting tools are used to generate reports um, on the test results. So this can include, uh, of course, um, detailed logs of the test executions, screenshots, and, um, and summary reports of the test results. The test data is used to drive the test cases. So this can include data for creating test accounts, data for, create, for testing different uh, uh, scenarios, and data for testing different edge cases. The design patterns are reusable solutions uh, for uh, reusable solutions to common uh, problems in software development. Um, so there are design patterns that are um, that are commonly used in test automation frameworks, uh, such as the page object model and the the page factory pattern. So unfortunately, I cannot explain a lot about the design process. So if you have uh, other questions about this specific topic, uh, we can discuss later, of course. Next up is um, the best practices. So um, the best practices here, uh, as I stated here in my presentation, is of course using version control for the test automation framework. It's, it's mandatory. Keep the test automation framework up to date with the latest tools and technologies, modular design, this, this uh, data management, and continuously approve the automation testing. So, um, uh, using the version control of the test automation framework, uh, it's it's as I said, it's uh, it's mandatory. So, it allow it allows you to track changes uh, you made to the test automation framework over time. And it makes it easy to revert to a previous version if, if it's necessary. Keeping the test automation framework up to date with latest tools and technologies. Um, uh, it's, and uh, as, as new tools and technology now are becoming available, uh, it is important to evaluate, evaluate them and 
um, evaluate them and consider incorporating them into, uh, into this automation framework. So I'm, I will give an example actually uh, about using one, one of these best practices. So um, the, most, the most widely used test automation framework we know uh, nowadays is Selenium WebDriver. So I guess you're familiar with Selenium. So yeah. So it's an open source for, uh, for automating web browsers and supports multiple programming languages such as C, C Sharp, uh, Java, Python, and JavaScript. And now it's, uh, it's starting to support TypeScript as well. So it's a bot in uh, modular design. So to maintain and, uh, and, uh, and scale Selenium driver, you can uh, use version control to, back, uh, to track changes over time. And keep the framework up to date with the latest tools and technologies. So another example actually is Appium. It's, uh, it's very, very common within uh, web application, uh, progressive web applications and also mobile applications. So uh, it is an open source tool for automation and um, well, mostly used for mobile applications as, as, as I stated. So Appium supports multiple platforms, uh, including uh, iOS and Android, and can be integrated with Selenium WebDriver as well for, uh, for web applications testing. So as a conclusion, I will say that, um, that uh, keeping track of your tests is, is something you should consider uh, when when testing your, your application or, or using your, uh, your framework. And of course, if you have questions, I can answer them later. I try to shorten up the, the presentation because it's, it's, uh, it needs more time and more, uh, and more uh, uh, demonstration. So um, we have seen many uh, benefits of this automation framework and the different type of this automation framework uh, that are available. So um, we also discussed the key tips uh, and tricks, uh, which is the design and architecture of maintaining and scaling the test automation framework over time. Um, so including using, using version control and keeping the framework up to date uh, with the latest tools and technologies. So uh, we have also uh, we have also stated um, uh, many many tips for uh, for uh, scaling also scaling the, the, this automation framework, and can give you examples of uh, most known uh, um, this automation frameworks that are used nowadays, which are open source and also very maintainable. I can say. Um, robot framework uh, for, uh, for functional testing and integration. And also, if you are familiar with performance and load testing, you can use uh, G-Methods or, or other uh, paid solutions as in Gatlin. So this is it for today. If you have questions, I'll be here to answer them. Thank you so much. <laughs>